Hello everyone, I'm Daniel Butler, High Security Sales Engineer. Today I'm going to review the procedure to replace the, the main circuit board in one of our hydraulic gate operators. We call the main circuit board the Smart Touch Controller, or STC, and I'll be using one of our hydraulic gate operators, the Slide Driver 15, as the gate operator that I'll be replacing the board in. All right. So let's quickly kind of review our setup here. So as I, I pan down here, you can see on the table I have a Windows-based laptop, and I'm running the Start software. You can see that Start screen on there. And really, I'm just using this to save the, the menu settings and to be able to restore them quickly once I uh, replace the board. And so I've got, there's the laptop, there's the cable, there's the new Smart Touch controller board. Uh, that's part number MX000585-0. And right next to it is, here's the slide driver 15. It's a single phase 115 volt AC unit. There's the keypad display on the lid of the electrical enclosure. And that's what we'll be opening up here in a few minutes to look at that main circuit board and review the procedure. But first, let's take a look at the side. On our gate operators, we put a serial number sticker on the side of it. And let's take a closer look at that here. Here we identify this as a slide driver 15. There's the serial number and the input voltage. And then there's the date. That's the date of manufacture. So January 6 of 2015. And there's also, just in case that, that sticker has come off the side of the chassis, there's also an identical sticker on the pump pack on the on the reservoir you can see it there to the right on the reservoir of the pump pack there okay so that's the second place for that serial number sticker and the data manufacturer and now I'm so flip open the lid to the the gray electrical enclosure and let's take a gander inside all right so there we go okay as we look at this inside the electrical enclosure uh, starting on the left over there that white unit is called the motor contactor. Up in the upper left is the transformer. To the right of that, that small circuit board is called the power supply board. And to the right of that, on the right side of the electrical enclosure, is the main circuit board, the smart touch controller. Okay. All right, let's do a quick overview here of the procedure. All right, so we're going to remove all the cables, uh, starting with this ribbon cable. Remove that. That goes to the display board and keypad. We have a couple cables down here for the limit switches. Remove those. We'll remove the red stop jumper on there, and that's the, the one that's on the number one terminal interface that's normally closed, and that's going over to one of the comm terminals on the power supply board over here. Uh, here was the big power connector, that big yellow connector. It's got some white tabs that hold it in, so we'll rotate it back and pull it up. There's a, the connector for the, the buzzer or speaker and also the stop button. So once those are all removed, this is a pretty vanilla plane install here. We don't have any safeties on. There's no vehicle detectors plugged into our HY5B slots or HY5A slots. Um, and once we do that, there's six screws, one in each corner of the board and two in the middle. We'll remove those, pull the board out. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna close the lid. And if the, the board is still operational, that is you can still see the display and everything, then what would be beneficial is to know what the current settings are. So I'm going to hit the menu key one time and watching the scroll, you'll notice the build year setting, the operator type setting, the handing, the usage classification, that's for the UL325. There's a cycle count and it stops at the close timer setting. By the way, we are in the user menu here, okay? So I've, I've written down those settings on the board here. So there we have it. We have a slide driver 15. Data manufacturer is 162015. And we have build year is one. The upper tarp is 1A. The set handing is right-handed. And the usage class is three, all right? So now, armed with that information, uh, we're ready to do the board replacement, okay? Yeah, one more thing here. Uh, I previously showed you by pressing the menu key one time on the keypad and watching the, the display that you could uh, review 
the settings, the build year, the, the operator type, the handing, and the usage class. Uh, uh, and, and so we wrote those down and we'll re-enter those once we put in the new board. Another thing to consider is you could, using our start software, which I'm showing here on the, on the screen right now, and I'm going to go into that in a second in into the setting here that which says enter operator menu settings, and I'm going to click on that right now. I, I have my my laptop, which is a Windows-based laptop, hooked up to the to the main circuit board, the Smart Touch controller, using that start download cable, and I've got it connected to that RS232 uh, connector on the Smart Touch controller. And I'm going to go right now. You can see that it, it's at the time and date tab, but uh, before we send out a new board. They, they go into this and set the time and date. So the time and date should be correct on that board. But what I'm here for primarily is to really just save the menu settings. So I'm gonna do that right now. So I'm gonna click at the bottom, which is save menu settings, and it's gonna automatically default to the, the folder on your, your hard drive. It's uh, under high security, so the high security start menu settings folder. And I'm gonna call the slide driver 15. And so there it is, I'm, and now I'm, by doing that, by saving that, I've, I've just saved the, those settings, the UC, the operator type, the build year, and after replacing the board, I can then reconnect my laptop to it, and then I would load those menu settings, and I'd be done, okay? So a little simpler way there, uh, instead of writing down the settings and then rekeying them, is just to use your start uh, software and to save the menu settings and then load those menu settings after you do the board swap. All right, all right, that's it for that. Let me hit done here and let's proceed. And the very first step, of course, we're gonna drop power on this, okay? So I'm gonna turn off power. If you need to, uh, to go to the panel and drop the breaker there, do that as well, be safe. Okay, so, so now that I've dropped power on this thing, I'm gonna start removing these cables. First, the, the display keyboard cable. I'm gonna remove the, the two limit switch cables. Got a screwdriver handy here so I can remove the, the red jumper wire from that stop button. Okay. Uh, I'm going to remove this connector that goes to the stop button and, and uh, buzzer. And then I'm going to pull off this big cable. Now, this big cable, it's held in place by these little white connectors. So, carefully pry that off of there. Got that off of there. Now let's remove all these screws. First, remove this one here in the corner. Okay, so we got the, the six screws removed. And let's remove the board. Pulling out the board. Replacing it with the new board. Just about there on these six screws here. All right, so I've got all those six screws on there. I'm going to put on the big yellow power connector. Make sure you get those. It only goes one way. you're not off a pin. All right, press that down on there securely. Reconnect that speaker stop button cable. Again, all these connectors only go one way, but you can be off a pin, okay? So make sure you're Got those plugged correctly. I'm putting on the limit switches here. All 
All right, so got the limit switches on. Put on the stop wire here. To, if we don't put on the stop wire, the operator will not run, right? The number one stop terminal is a normally closed interface there. All right, and lastly, the, the cable for the display, keypad. I think that's it. I'm uh, just reviewing. Looks like we've got everything connected. Okay, so let's turn power on. I don't know if you, you can see that heartbeat beating on the board there. Right? And now that I've got the display turn the power turned on. I'm ready to input those menu settings once again, okay? All right, we've got the new board installed and now I've powered up the slide driver and it immediately goes into its initial setup routine and we have a few questions to answer, all right? And it's asking right now for the operator type. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about this keypad and display. We call this a dual function keypad in the sense that uh, there, there's a couple modes. One is command or run mode and one is menu mode. So in command or run mode, you can see it corresponds to these keys that have the black lettering, open, close, stop, right? And also reset over here, okay? So, and that's in command or run mode. When you press the menu key down in the lower right, that's lettered in white. Now the white lettering applies to those keys, the previous next and select. And it looks like on these keys that there's a left and a right, but actually just press in the middle, okay? This is a, a pressure-sensitive pressure keypad, and you press right in the middle, and, and uh, such as I just did, and I've selected that item right now, the OT, all right? So, so let's talk about this OT setting here. That's the operator type. And to be able to change the setting, you have to press that select button like I just did, all right? And now it's changeable. And now to see the, the, the settings for this operator type, I press the next key to increment up one at a time, or I could press the previous key to decrement. So let, let's do that. So I'm gonna hit next, and there it says OT1 is a slide driver, swing riser, three, four, five, right, seven. Uh, that's a slide driver 50 VF. So I'm incrementing right now, and now I've wrapped around. And we know that this is a slide driver, so I'm gonna select number one. Once I've chosen the, the setting I want, I press the select key again, notice those first two characters stop flashing, and now we've set that menu setting of OT or operator type as a, to, to number one slide driver, all right? So, so now let's, let's move forward here. Uh, if that was all the questions that you needed to reply to, it would automatically exit this routine. You'd see high security displayed in, in the, the menu and also the version of the software. It'd also chirp at you or beep at you. And then it'd go back and it'd say high security gate, gate open, gate closed, okay? But because it hasn't done that, it means there's more questions that we need to answer or satisfy. And so I'm gonna hit the next key. So I hit that. And here, AD I know is uh, input uh, voltage. So is this an AC or DC machine? Again, to, to change it, I'm gonna hit select here and the AD is flashing. I'm gonna hit next. So that's an AC gate. This is two, a DC gate, and three, high inverter. High inverter is a UPS battery backup unit that, that if, you, if you need a, a battery backup, that's a good sol uh, solution for you. Let's go, and, and from the previous settings, when we saved those from the scroll, it said the operator type was 1A. The A indicates AC. If that would have been 1D, we would have chosen DC. So I'm choosing AC. I'm gonna hit that select button again, stop it flashing. It didn't pop out of this routine, so let's hit the next key, uh, build date. Okay, it actually, it says BY, because we call this build year, but it's also uh, synonymous with build date. And this is the, the variable or setting that we came up with to satisfy the UL 325 January 2016 update, and also the August of 2018 update, okay? So, so basically this is saying that if the machine was built before 2016, that would be a build year one. If it was before, if it was manufactured between 
1 January of 2016 and July 31st of 2018, that would be build year two. Machines built after 1 August of 2018 are build year three. So let's take a look. I'm going to select that. There it is. So build year one is before 2016. That's what this machine is, by the way, because it was manufactured in 2015. Remember, we looked at that serial number earlier on this, okay? Uh, but I'm just going to hit the next sheet, just show you the other settings. And there's January of 2016 to July 31st of 2018. And there's after July 2018, okay? So starting with August uh, 1st of 2018. All right, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the previous key to decrement, or I could hit the next key to wrap around. There, build date, build year one. I'm gonna select that. And by the way, by selecting that, it means that I don't have to put on the monitored external entrapment devices. If it's build year two or three, we are monitoring those internal uh, external entrapment devices, and you will have to have those properly configured, installed on the machine for the machine to work. And a slide gate. That would be uh, a safety, whether that's an edge or an eye, that covers the one that would cover the open direction and one that would cover the closed direction. All right, so let's continue on. It didn't pop out of this routine, like I said earlier, so let's keep going. Usage class, we recorded that earlier. Uh, that was a UC3, so I'm going to select this, make it flash, change to UC3. There. And it's still in that routine, so I'm going to hit next again. And this is gate handing. And in, in a nutshell, when you're at the operator, you're standing on the secure side of the, the perimeter, and if the gate opens to the left, it's the left-handed, it opens to the right, it's the right-handed. On our When we previously uh, recorded the, the menu settings from the scroll, it was a right-handed gate, so I'm going to select this to make it flash again, to make it changeable, and either way I go, there it is, right, so I'm selecting that. And it's still asking for more questions, right? Otherwise, it would have popped out of this routine, so hit next, oh, buzzer. So this is the volume of the buzzer. Uh, so select it to, to, for your choice. It doesn't matter to me, but uh, there's there's the loudest buzzer, and that's not as quite as loud. And here you can hear those. There's number one, there's two. So let's go back and set it to one. That's pretty annoying, okay. All right, and now notice how it just came out of the routine. It says high security H460, high security gate stop. That H460 is the version of the firmware on the smart touch controller. All right, so that's how you set up. Piece of cake, uh, the, the slide driver is ready to run. Let, let's see if it runs. Let's hit open. Sure enough. Does that motor spin up? I'm gonna stop it now, all right? Because I don't have this on the gate, so it's not gonna hit those limit switches. I could have reached down and tripped them. But now let, let's do a close, make sure it closes. We're, All right, that concludes the setup of this uh, Smart Touch controller board replacement and the reconfiguration of that board. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, we've just installed the board and we just re entered those settings that we saved from the scroll earlier the settings such as build year, operator type, the handing, and the usage class. But if we had previously saved those settings using the Start program, we could reload those. And then we wouldn't have to re-enter them via the keypad display and we'd be finished at that point. So, okay, so let's try that now. So I've got start showing. You can see the, the keypad display that says OT0. And now I'm gonna go into enter operator menu settings. I'm gonna select that. I'm now into those settings. Uh, I'm gonna go over to the, the load menu settings button at the lower left. I'm going to select the file that I previously saved and I called it slide driver 15 and there it is. I'm going to reload that. And now notice on the display to it, once I went into the menu settings, it said high security config mode. And now that we've done that, I'm just going to say done. Oh, well, let's verify. First of all, let's go to the installer menu. And if we go to part two, the tabs on the side, it did select the, the slide driver OT one, which is uh, the, the correct setting for this operator type in the AC motor. Let's check another setting. Let's look at that build year. Yep, it said pre-2016. So it looked like it did what it was supposed to do. And now that I, I just hit done, it exit that program. And 
you can see the display just went into what we call runner command mode. So now it says high security gate, gate stopped. Okay, so that concludes this uh, procedure to replace a smart touch controller board in any of our hydraulic gate operators, okay? And these high, uh, the smart touch controller is the main circuit board in, in not only the slide driver, but in the strong arm, the swing riser, the hydro lift, the hydro swing, the strong arm M30, M50, hydro supply XL. So all those hydraulic gate operators use the same main circuit board, the smart touch controller, MX000 585-0. All right, that concludes this uh, video showing uh, the smart touch controller main circuit board replacement procedure. Thank you. Bye-bye. We have a couple of our smart touch controller boards and I was going to review the labeling on these two boards and specifically the labeling from terminal screw 13 down to terminal screw 19. And as you look at these boards, these are identical boards. The only difference, the one on the left has a label on it. You can see the different color blue, but and, it, and it's uh, labeled to where number 13, terminal screw 13 is the edge sensor, 17 would be the photo eye open, 19 is the photo eye close, and the photo eye power is on 14 and 15. On the board on the right, you can see that we've redefined those and we call it sensor one, sensor common, sensor two, and sensor three. All right. Uh, first, let me give you a little background. Smart touch controller came out in 2002. The first version of the smart touch controller board we called the classic board, and that was prevalent from 2002 to 2006. In 2006, we released the version two of the smart touch controller board, and that's what you're seeing on the screen. We call that the new generation board. And now a little background, let's rewind back to March of 2000, when UL325 came out with some specific safety requirements for gate operators and gate operator systems. And one of the changes was that gate operator manufacturers, such as high security, on their gate operators, they had to have a built-in safety device that they called a type A device, okay? And high security implemented that with what we call the IES, or Inherent Entrapment Sensor, and that is installed on our gate operators today. The second re safety requirement with UL325 back in March in 2000 was that gate system installers had to identify entrapment risk zones and had to install two independent means of entrapment protection on gate systems. So let's talk specifically about a slide gate here. So a slide gate needed two, either uh, an edge or an eye to protect in both directions of travel, one in the open direction and one in the closed direction. In January of 2016, UL325, and specifically January 12th of 2016, UL325 was updated and one of the, the major changes in that was that those two independent means of entrapment protection, those eyes and edges, had to now be monitored. Monitored meaning that they, before you move that gate, they had to make sure that uh, at least an iron edge was installed in both an open or closed direction. All right, so, so that was the requirement for UL325 in January 2016. And the way that high security implemented that was to update their software and we updated the software and then we relabeled those inputs. So, so now we could put on eyes and edges on our board. It doesn't matter what, which uh, terminal they were on, whether that be on 13 or, or 17 or 19, and we would define it in our software, whether that was an eye in the open direction or closed direction or an edge in the open or closed direction. That was the big change for us on, on these boards. And so, so today, if you're installing a smart touch controller board, inside of a hydraulic gate operator that was manufactured before 2016, then we, we send a label with that board, that, that slightly blue, off blue color label, and you would put that on the board for any gate operator that you're putting the board in manufactured before 2016. If it was manufactured after 2016, you don't have to do that because we've refined, redefined those as sensor one, sensor two, sensor three, and that's good from uh, back in 2016 to current to today. All right, so I just want to review that with you.